Hey again guys and welcome back. Today I want to play with uh, these things. So these are uh, thermal electric coolers uh, or thermal electric generators, TEX or TEGS. Um, there's a slight difference between the two but I'm not exactly clear on what that is. I think it's just efficiencies. But uh, yeah, basically these are kind of simple devices um, and they're sort of surrounded by two ceramic plates and they have two wires coming out and if you apply a um, current on these wires one of these plates will become hot and the other one will become cold basically when you see um, those little uh, coolers that you plug into your car and it uh, it's like a little fridge uh, they use these things and these things were really cheap I think I bought these for about a buck fifty a piece There'll be an affiliate link in the description if you want to buy your own. But yeah, they're very inexpensive. And the big trade-off is they're very inefficient. So um, yeah, they burn a lot of current. And that's why like in your car, it doesn't matter. As long as you keep the engine running, as long as you're going on a road trip, it'll just keep charging up the battery. But yeah, and they produce a lot of heat. So you need sort of like a heat sink. You need some way to get rid of the, the hot side and then you can use the cold side. So for that, I actually bought something off my local uh, Craigslist, which is this AMD uh, CPU cooler. It's the, I think it's the Wraith Stealth. It's the, I don't know, it's, a, it's the small one. This came from a Ryzen 5 3600 and um, yeah, so it's, or maybe 2600, but anyways, it's very small, but it should be enough to carry away the heat on this thing. So basically the plan is going to be to go like, sort of like this, and you see it's about the right size. And uh, we're going to power this up and see if we can get this thing becoming cold. I think I've gathered enough stuff to make this work now. So uh, yeah, got power supply, got a temperature reading. I got this uh, circuit board holder, which will also function as a... Um, cooler holder I guess so um, let's see I'm gonna try to squeeze this in I'm gonna try to just hold it by the head of the bolts I'm not sure if this is gonna hold well if it falls then at least it'll be something hilarious uh, on camera all right here's the tech I've always already confirmed that if you put uh, power on the red and ground on the black the side with the writing here will become the side that becomes cold um, so I'm gonna put this down onto here um, and usually you're supposed to use like a thermal compound I don't really feel like uh, cleaning this off so I'm gonna try just like this and I'm gonna hope that just pressing down on the tech will be enough to keep it in place and transfer enough heat. There we go. Um, so to press down, I've got uh, rubber bands. Don't know how well it's gonna hold it, but better than my fingers freezing. There we go. See if I can run one more, maybe a thicker one. Hopefully that's just enough uh, tension to hold this thing down. There we go. I'm going to put my uh, thermal probe here. I'm going to put that probably underneath these rubber bands so it holds nice and solidly onto the face of the tech. Oh, and of course I use the meter which says uh, NFG on the temperature. Why would I have done that? This one here is FG, which is good. So degrees uh, science, hopefully you guys are gonna be, gonna be okay. 22, if I put my finger on there, you can see it goes, it goes up, so that's fine. Um, we're gonna connect the tech over to this power supply here. That should be good, and over here. I really should get a bench top power supply something with a bit more grunt than this thing, but I think it'll do for now. 
There we go. Um, and now we just need to set the current limit. I think we're going to start with 500 milliamps. And we'll see if we get a change in temperature here. Oh yeah, and because it's more dramatic, I figured we'd also use a little bit of a, a chemical to uh, see if we can freeze it. So this is a chemical, dihydrogen monoxide. Uh, you can get it pretty much everywhere. Wouldn't recommend messing with it because uh, pretty much everyone who's had dihydrogen monoxide in their system has passed away. So be very careful. All right, and I'm gonna go and, oh, and I can connect up the fan as well. Let's see. Uh, this is the fan header to actually supply cooling to this module, but I'm going to use it to supply power to the fan on this Ryzen setup. It's a little bit loose in the connections here, but I don't think it really matters. I, I don't think we're going to be using this as, as high of a wattage as a CPU cooler, a CPU would be. So I think this is a, the CPU usually on here has a 65 watt TDP. And um, okay, well, let's go. All right, so we're at 1.3 volts and half an amp, and the temperature is decreasing. 18, 17, oh yeah, that's cool. So it's colder than the heat sink, so it's definitely cooling down because of the current. So 14, don't forget, I put a blob of uh, dihydrogen monoxide here, so it has a little bit more thermal mass. That's not too bad. Let's see if we can increase the current limit. Let's uh, double the current to one amp. I see it's uh, warming up now. So it was definitely doing something. And here we go. At one amp, we are at almost uh, 3 volts. I have 12 volt limit on here. Down it goes, 12, 11. It's quite weird to think about that you can actually... Yeah, that's that's cool. Is the heat sink warm? Not even. Not even a little warm. Nope. So the thing is, uh, it's the, the, the two plates here. You can have uh, uh, thermal transfer through the plates very easily. So if you don't cool the hot side, what happens is the hot side will come up and heat up the cold side. And basically it doesn't really work without a heat sink. Oh, that's cold. Four degrees Celsius. For you Americans, uh, water freezes at zero. Dihydrogen monoxide is nearly identical to, to water. It's pretty close. All right, let's try... Um, raising the current some more. Let's go one and a half amps. Oh, my, uh, getting a little bit of coil wine on the unit here. Don't know if you can pick that up. Two, one degree. Here goes zero. So that should be freezing now. Do I have a little poker? Yeah, I do have a little poker. We're still not frozen. might take a little bit because uh, so water has a latent heat to it. Oh, I don't know. Minus two. It's not frozen yet. It's a big it's a big chunk of uh, dihydrogen monoxide there. It's not going any lower. Did you notice that? It's not going any lower. And the reason for that is that the um, the energy required to make a um, liquid change state, or let's, let's say a, a gas, a liquid, whatever, matter change state, is way more than the energy it takes to drop it by one degree. So that's why right now you're seeing a pause here. This is getting a little warm. Heat sink is still cold, but that plate is really chilly. You could really chill your beer over this thing. So you see here, the temperature is not dropping. That's because it needs to run through that energy 
pump that energy or, or take a, a ton of energy out in order to make it drop to um, a solid. It's cold. I feel like we're going to make it though. If I move the probe, the probe is still movable. Oh, it's changing. I can see it. Yeah, we're starting to form ice here. Come on, only a minute 35 left on the recording on the camera. Yeah, there's there's ice there. There's definitely ice there. So the bottom layer is icing over. It would be even uh, even faster if we had a thermal compound, I believe, to get the heat gone. That is cold. I think we should crank the current up just a little bit more. Yeah, there's definitely ice in there now. But let's crank the current to just prove it. We're up to 2 amps now. Um, 6 volts, 2 amps. That is definitely cold. It's so cold now that I have kind of like a heat layer on my finger. So I don't feel it right away. And there we go. That's, I don't know if you can hear that. This is the substrate. This is the ice. It is frozen. Complete ice now. You can chip that off. Well, that's pretty cool, but we're still going. We're at minus 9 here. Minus 10. Lots of uh, squealing from the power supply. Yeah, so now we're, we're dropping precipitously. Let's see if we can bring the current up even more. We'll go 3 amps. See if we can start saturating the um, heat sink here. So minus 12, minus 13. We're at 10 volts. This is now, yeah, this is all frost now. All the uh, humidity in the air is starting to condense and freeze on the surface. I wish I had a little flat screwdriver. I think it would be more impactful. There's a flat screwdriver. Let's see if I can. I don't know if you can see that, but it's definitely ice. Minus 13 now. The probe is completely stuck in there. Might be reaching the end. Is the heat sink getting warm? No, the heat sink is still really cold. Uh, and that makes sense because we're only at uh, 30 watts of power. We can try cranking this up to uh, 4 amps, but that's the limit of my power supply here. So let's go like, yeah, 3.8. Take care of the inconsistencies or the inefficiencies in this device. That's mighty cold. Minus 13, we're kind of stuck there. That is definitely cold. Oh yeah. Heat sink, still not warming up really. I have to say, this is a lot of fun. Oh, minus 11. Did we lose? I think we're getting to the end of our thermal conductivity, just having ceramic sit on uh, this aluminum. We might need a thermal interface or like a clamp to squeeze this on harder. Yeah. Uh, yeah, minus 10. We're kind of stuck there. All right, now let's see how fast. I'm going to pull the fan off. So the fan is now no, no longer spinning. Now let's see how fast we turn back into water here. So turning it off now. And minus 5, minus 4, minus 2, 0. Look, that's that latent heat. See, it takes forever. Now all this... All this condensation is turning to water. One degree. Right, that's just about where the probe is. Should be able, there we go. See, it's free now. Moves around. Three, four. Yeah, so the ice that's directly on the sheet 
Oh yeah, this is actually not even that cold anymore. Uh, this pile of ice here was keeping that area cold, but if you can see, it's already 15, 16. So if you're not actively moving all the heat off of the tech, you're actually, you, you won't get any cooling at all. So that is pretty cool. And yet now we're up, here's, the, this is the inefficiency I was telling you about. Even though we were actively removing the heat from the hot side, um, there was enough heat remaining to bring this up higher than it actually started. So, and this is on the cold side. So basically, you're losing efficiency in heat. So there, there's 30. So these things are really cool. Um, like this, you can build little fridges and stuff. And I intend to build one. I, I ordered some parts to make some sort of uh, like a fridge-like device just for fun. Um, and when they come in, we're going to play with that. But there's also another use for these uh, techs because even though you run current through it, one side turns cold, the other one turns hot. If you can heat up one side of this and cool down the other side and have the other the wires going to a load, you can actually generate a current and you can make this thing do work. Again, it's horribly inefficient, but just imagine a scenario where like, let's say you have a campfire where the fuel is unlimited, like, you know, the wood in a forest. If the fuel is unlimited and you can actively cool this thing, let's say even by cranking a little uh, fan or just having a, a large heat sink in the wind, you can charge your cell phone with one of these I'm not sure how, how well, I haven't uh, tried it yet, but I mean, the future is our oyster. So if you want to see more experiments with these things, um, let me know in the comments below. I will probably be doing them anyways, but um, it's always nice for you to comment and let the YouTube algorithm know that you enjoy the video. If you did enjoy it, hit, hit uh, me up with a thumbs up on the video and make sure to subscribe if you want to see more of these things. Thanks for watching.